Blake. Pick a man, bring your kit. The movie's based around the journey of two men, fundamentally, and I wanted the audience to have a relatively new experience with those men. And I wanted to feel that they didn't know them. And it's a real luxury to make a movie on this scale with two actors in the central roles who really are, relatively speaking, new to the game. George Mackay and Dean Charles Chapman, who are playing Schofield and Blake, both of them extraordinary young actors. George is best known for Sunshine on Leith and Captain Fantastic, and Dean Charles probably for Game of Thrones. And what's been great is that Sam's had the time to work with them so that the two boys have come together and they're very much a partnership now. They feel like they've been friends for years. What if I just shoot you walking in like this? You're gonna put a shoot walking down here. It's great, mate. Oh, yeah. George, feels like we're going to like, <laughs> a boxing match or something. <laughs> going to battle. <laughs> George Mackay, who plays Schofield, is just a fantastic young actor, really. But he embodies some of the qualities that I was looking for in him. There's something about him that's slightly old-fashioned and internal, honorable, and kind of ageless in a way. Where's Colonel McKenzie? Oh, he's in the line. Which way? Well, it's that way. We're headed up there now. For myself, as Schofield, I thought that it's important that he's a sort of anonymous everyman but then also he's got to have a very rich personal backstory. And so I wanted to have a strong sense of who he was and where he was from and who his daughters were, which you find out at the end of the film, that he's a father, he's got a wife at home, and that that's, that's his everything. I think Schofield's journey, of course, it is to save hundreds of men, but it's the promise to Blake which keeps him going, and it's the spirit of Blake which keeps him going, rather than the sort of magnitude of the task itself which I don't think he really realises until he winds up in the woods. He personally sees all the faces which may well be lost if he doesn't get that message across. Oh, that kind of keeps him going. Listen to me. I have a letter. I need to see Colonel McKenzie. There's no bloody way you're getting in there, mate. Sergeant, send the second wave. No! I've loved working with George. We've been through so much on this film together the ups, the downs, the hard work. Stop, 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 stop! The mic's off! And George has honestly thrown himself, you know, 100% into this role, in, into this film. Just jump! I can't, I can't see! You need to trust me! Jump! Good! Blake, who's played by Dean Charles Chapman, has a wonderful vulnerability and a sweetness and is a wonderful, instinctive actor. I'm sorry, all right? I'm sorry! Just let me through. I remember the first time I read the script and I just absolutely fell in love with Blake. And Blake, you know, is such a lovely, sweet kid. Just after the first read, I knew it was something special. All I'm saying is that we wait. Yes, you would say that, because it's not your brother, is it? Blake is the heart of the film, and it's Blake's love for his brother which accelerates it, which gets them moving. And it's Blake's love for his brother that he then passes to Schofield. We have to find the second, remember? Your brother. Uh, we have to go now. You can start on without me, I'll catch up. I've never ever done a film like this where I've just been able to completely lose myself in a scene before. And that farmhouse scene, I think it was like six, seven minutes. And it was tough. After that first take, I just couldn't stop crying. I've been hit. I believed every word of it and it stayed with me. I've been working in this industry since I've been four, and I've done a lot of different projects before, but I've never, ever loved the character as much as Blake, and I've never, ever loved the story that I've been a part of before like this, ever. They're really anchoring the film, the two of them, and then at various points in the narrative, they meet other characters, so Colin Firth, Mark Strong, Andrew Scott, Benedict Cumberbatch, Richard Madden. It reads like a sort of all-star, best of British lineup, a kind of cast that you would dream of getting in your film and then would never be able to get. Lance Corporals Blake and Schofield, sir. Colin Firth has done an amazing job. I've learned so much from him. The second Devons are advancing here. How long will it take you to get there? It was amazing the sort of intensity he brought to the set. And there was this precision that came with it as well. Good luck. Wake up, Kilgore. Bloody waste of space. 
Andrew Scott, who plays Lieutenant Leslie, brings this sort of wonderful sense of humour. He's electric. It's amazing just sort of watching him go and just trying to keep up with him. May the Lord pardon you your faults and whatever sins thou hast committed. Andrew brought this real pathos to kind of the moment of saying goodbye. Cheerio. I'm sorry about your friend. Mark Strong plays this wonderful, warm, and very human officer. He feels an incredibly wise presence in the film, and he's really there for Schofield at a moment when he needs him. If you do manage to get to Colonel McKenzie, make sure there are witnesses. Colonel McKenzie! Everything. You have been ordered to stop! Who the hell are you? Another extremely strong performance in the film is Benedict Cumberbatch. He manages to capture the authority and the steeliness of a man in that position, but also someone who is within the fog of war trying to do the right thing and eventually does do the right thing. Stand them down. Lieutenant Blake, I'm from the 8th. I was sent here to deliver a message. The 8th? You must know my brother. Richard Madden, who plays Joseph Blake, just came in and delivered this incredibly emotional performance. Oh, I'm glad you were with him. And I believe it's the first take that he actually did that is in the movie. There are recognizable faces, but at the same time, they're just tiny little insights into giant lives that were lived during the war but you meet them only for a few seconds. I'm very flattered that they wanted to come along for the right reasons, which is to tell the story because they believe in the movie.